Then in October of 2023, Clark joined NBA player Chris Paul in a popular State Farm TV commercial. That's not Chris Paul. Nash joined NBA player Chris Paul. But uh, what? Business administration. Then in October of 20. That should be Butler, my guy. Chris. Chris 2023, Clark joined NBA player Chris Paul in a. I haven't seen the ad. The, 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 the ad. Maybe Chris Paul is in this video. But that wasn't Chris Paul. There is more interest in the WNBA today than ever before in history. Oh, I thought he was going to say there's more interest in the WNBA than in the, in the NBA. I was like, uh, I don't know about that one. History. And there is no doubt that it's because of one woman, Caitlin Clark. Caitlin is breaking viewership records, attendance records, and on the court records, all while generating the company. Yo, is Caitlin the Jordan of the WNBA? Because the NBA was low, he got to die. Well, I don't want to say dying until Jordan made, Jordan made the NBA global. Because um, who was the Lakers. The Lakers made the NBA profitable. I believe. I don't want to say the Lakers, but um, she has a Steph Curry. WNBA was a HP company hundreds of millions of dollars. Despite that, there is a clear resistance against crowning her as the WNBA's savior. There is a massive divide in the sports world between those who see Caitlin Clark as a trailblazer in women's basketball and those who see her as a straight white female receiving special treatment in a historically black sport. The animosity towards Caitlin has gotten so bad that not only are players speaking out against her, but they are purposely trying to hurt her on the court. And the refs seem to be turning a blind eye to it. Today we're going to discuss Caitlin Clark's controversial rise to superstardom and attempt to understand why the WNBA seems to be unsatisfied with literally everything she does. The WNBA has never been profitable, which means that the company spends never? more money than they earn. For many years there has been heated discussions as to why women's basketball players make so much less than their male counterparts, pointing out things like the highest paid female basketball player earns a two $250,000 salary, and the highest paid male basketball player gets a $50 million salary. The Steph Curry, you make dollar salary. Wait. And the highest paid male basketball. I thought they made more than this. I ain't gonna lie. Only 50 male? Only 50 M's? How much? Wait, so the, is, the, is the NFL more profitable than. Because I could have sworn Tom Brady last year he signed like a $100 million. A hundred million dollar deal for like a year, and I'm pretty sure Pat Mahomes just. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not even going. I'm not. My head hurts too. You know what I'm saying? Basketball player gets a fifty million. That's still a lot of fucking money, though. The fundamental business model of any sports organization is actually quite simple. The more people that watch the more money they make. In 2019, like the WNBA me. generated $60 million. It's actually like streaming. The NBA oh that God. same year generated $7 billion. But there is a different way to analyze the discrepancy. We are not asking you to get paid what the men get paid. We're asking you to get paid the same percentage of revenue shared. Like, I don't think I should get paid the same as LeBron. Yet even this more logical approach to addressing the pay gap still unfortunately doesn't hold up. The WNBA was losing so much money that the NBA started subsidizing the league by giving them $15 million per year to stay afloat because the NBA recognized that there needed to be a female league. The lack of interest in the WNBA has been infamously joked about over the years, most notably by comedy legend Bill Burr. They have been playing in front of three to four 400 people a night for a quarter of a century. Not to mention, it's a male subsidized league. We gave you a league. None of you showed up. Where are all the feminists? None of Pushing you. you out. None of you went to the games. None of you. You all. Yeah, that is just that simple, bro. People love to watch the best of the best. You know what I'm saying? And that goes with anything. They want to watch the best of the best in, 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 in movies, the best of the best in, in sports, and best of the best. You know what I'm saying, bro? It just makes sense. You. If you're not good at what you're doing, like, the people are going to tell you. Not me. Not men. Women failed the WNBA. Ladies, ladies. 
Name your top five all-time WNBA players of all time. Come on. That's it. Name five WNBA teams. Name the WNBA team in your city. You can't do it. Even though Bill was just joking here, there is some truth to his punchlines. It is a business owner's responsibility to do something to grow their brand and business. Whether that be marketing, advertising, or simply making the product better to draw more interest from customers. People forget that these massive global sports brands like the NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, all started just like any other small businesses. They are selling something, which in this case starts at trying to get people to watch others play organized sports. Sports. And we can all agree that the people who play the sport are just as important, if not more important, than the game itself. You, However, you can't just David, force people to be interested how you doing, in the player. Man? I mean, you always can try to see come up stream, with you always story it, man. It's, Maybe a good you, underdog you, story, you someone who was destined to fail but overcame it. Maybe somebody who had a tragic loss in their family or survived some sort of rare condition. Or what about a good controversy? Who doesn't love two players that absolutely hate each other facing off? Storylines, personality attitude, looks, background, are all things that can definitely help draw interest to an athlete. But more often than not, a player's rise to superstardom is rooted in their ability to play the game exceptionally well, and Caitlin Clark was nothing short of a basketball prodigy. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, mm. Underdog Fantasy. Don't gimbal, guys, but if you got a gimbal, use code... I think it's called Prince. I think it's called Prince Bo. I don't even know. Caitlin had undergone years of basketball <sighs> development through All Iowa Attack, an AAU basketball program in Ames, Iowa. She received her first letter of interest from Missouri State before seventh grade. Entering her sophomore year, she ranked second in the state in scoring. One game, she scored 60 points in a 90 to 70. 60 points? That's elite level. That's elite level score. Ain't gonna lie. <laughs> it literally though. Yo, 60 points is insane. Ain't gonna lie. 78 win against Mason City High School. In her junior year, she set the state single game record with 13. But against Mason City, though, you know what I'm saying? Like that's so impressive, but like me and Mason City though. Three pointers. For the season, Clark averaged 32.6 points, 6.8 rebounds, three Three and a half assists and 2.3 steals per game, helping Dowling crazy. finish with a 17 and 8 record. Clark would be named the Iowa Gatorade Player of the Year and repeated as an All State First Team selection by the IPSWA. Every single one of Caitlin's averages increased during her senior year and she led the state in scoring for the second year in a row. By the time she graduated from high school, ESPN ranked Caitlin as the fourth best player in her class and a five-star prospect. Caitlin announced her intention to play basketball for the University of Iowa. When she entered her freshman season as Iowa's starting point guard, she stood at six foot and was a prolific scorer, capable of putting up points from all areas of the court. Caitlin has a deep shooting range that allows her to hit three-pointers from well beyond the arc. Her scoring versatility makes her a constant threat to opposing defenses. Outside of scoring, she is also an excellent playmaker. Her court vision and passing skills are exceptional, often reading defense like a true point guard effectively and finding open players with precision. Caitlin's ball handling allows her to navigate through defenses with ease. She can drive to the basket effectively and will break down defenders oh without no. breaking a sweat. While Caitlin's defense leaves much to be desired, she has a confident demeanor on the court and plays with a high level of intensity and competitiveness. Or in other words, she plays with swag. Throughout her college career, she was seemingly breaking records every other game and put up stat lines that hadn't been accomplished by any player in the history of NCAA. D1 basketball. And while many college basketball fans knew about Caitlin's dominance, many people's first introduction to Caitlin Clark, as well as potentially women's basketball as a whole, was during her highly publicized controversy during the 2023 March Madness tournament. In the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament, Caitlin recorded her best playoff performance to date with. Oh my god! 41 points, 12 assists, 10 rebounds? 41 points, 12 assists, and 10 rebounds in a 97-83 win over That's Louisville. Crazy. She became the first player in both men's or women's tournament history to record a 30 or 40 point triple double. That's While her insane. performance made history books, Clark's behavior throughout the game is what made national news. Clips of her trash talking went viral <laughs> on social media, like when she was interpreted as saying, you're down 15 points. Shut up <laughs> to her opponent. Then after knocking down- Yo, that's- but I just trash- it's part of the game. 
game, bro. It's part of the freaking game, bro. You tell me, bro. You, bro, bro. You, you think Steph Curry when he hits a freaking three in your in your face? You think he's not gonna? Bro, he does his thing. He does his, bro. He does his thing, bro. <laughs> he, literally, he literally does his thing. LeBron does his thing, bro. So he, yo, trash talk is literally part of the game. It's what makes the game better, bro. It's what makes you more intrigued, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's what we, it's, it's the, you know what I'm saying? The sport, the sports, you know what I'm saying? You, it, it locks you in, bro. But the player charisma, the player, the players themselves is what really, like, like, yeah, you can watch a good player, bro. And they could just do their job. They could just do their job and just like just shoot, you know what I'm saying? Shoot threes, you know what I'm saying? Whatever they shoot, goes in, they run back. That's boring. Anybody want to watch that? It's boring, bro. Bring the sauce, man. I want you, I want you to spit. I don't, I don't want you to spit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, I want you to bring a little swagger to it, man. I want you to let the other team know like they, they're boo-boos, bro. I want you to know they're still they're boo-boos, bro. Still here, appreciate you, my heart. Appreciate you. Down her sixth three-pointer, she looked at that same opponent, waved her hand in front of her face, mimicking wrestler John Cena's signature, you oh, can yeah. see me taunt. After the game, Cena I, publicly I need it. acknowledged Clark's use of his signature taunt. Even if they could see you, they couldn't guard you. Congrats on the historic performance, Caitlin Clark. However, not everyone was as supportive of Clark's behavior. Great shooter, but sh attitude female Always. LeBron she needs to learn some humility and sportsmanship LeBron. and that's putting it nicely sadly that seems to be the norm these days still lots of good kids in the game but showboating and taunting is more evident with each season however fans let her run her mouth because they felt she was destined to lose her next game while Iowa was entering their first final four since 1993 their opponent was the defending champion South Carolina who were on a 42 game win streak yet Clark recorded an another historic performance with 41 points, 8 assists, and 6 rebounds. Iowa won 77-73 in an upset against the Gamecocks. That's insane. I got goosebumps. Caitlin Clark just advanced the Iowa Hawkeyes to the Women's Basketball Championship yeah, for the first time in program history. However, the outrage that would erupt after the game would change women's basketball forever. It was a hard-fought battle, but LSU was simply the better team. With multiple players scoring 20 points or more, Caitlin couldn't take on the LSU Tigers by herself. She scored 30 points with 8 three-pointers, but Iowa still lost 102-85. to However, the controversial action of Caitlin Clark's biggest enemy, Angel Reese, caused a firestorm online. Uh -oh. Near the end of the game, Angel followed Clark while waving her hand in front of her face, hitting the same "you can't see me" taunt that Caitlin hit just a few days earlier. Hey, you, you guys, you know, if you can dish, you gotta take it too. You know, what I'm saying, yeah, ain't gonna Reese then pointed at her ring finger since LSU was about to secure the championship ring. The but like this, this is what I, I, I like this though. You know what I'm saying? And it matters me, ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Reese taunting Clark went mega viral. Sports oh, yeah. and political commentator Keith Olbermann referred to Reese as a f***ing idiot in a tweet. Barstool Sports founder Dave Portnoy called Angel Reese a classless piece of sh**. Shaquille O'Neal responded, so is your mother. Many people <laughs> Whoa, the me Shaquille O'Neal ain't gonna lie. Whoa. Will continue to dogpile on Angel Reese and send her unnecessary hate. Whereas others pointed out that there was no outrage when Caitlin Clark did the exact same thing just a few days before. Angel responded to the criticism during the post-game interview. All year, I was critiqued. Happy Monday, mate. Who I was. Nobody, I don't, yeah, 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 the narrative, I don't fit the narrative. I don't fit in the box that y'all want me to be in. I'm too hood, I'm too ghetto. Y'all told me that all year. But when other people do it, y'all don't say nothing. So this was for the girls that look like me, that gonna, that's gonna speak up on what they, they believe in. It's unapologetically you. And that's what I did it for tonight. This was for the more than, it was just bigger than me tonight. Angel and her supporters online felt that she was only receiving negative criticism because she was black. And if you read some of the hateful things being sent her way, it's hard to see it as anything other than racism. However, real sports fans knew that whether it was Caitlyn or Angel trash talking and taunting, it was good for entertainment. Talk this is all normal and just a part of the game. Even Caitlyn did not think that Angel deserved backlash. She should never be criticized for what she did. I'm just one that competes, and she competed. I'm a big fan of hers. But the drama was not done yet. In American sports, it's tradition to visit the White House after winning a championship. However, First Lady Jill Biden expressed her desire for Clark and Iowa to also visit the White House. I know we'll have the...
champions come to um, to the White House. We always do. So, you know, we'll have LSU come. But you know what? I'm going to tell Joe, I think Iowa should come too because they played such a good game. Hmm. Somebody right here. Somebody right here. But they didn't win, though. But they didn't win, though. The, the, win, the winners, the, the winner goes to the White House. So, right? So winners and losers, that's sportsmanship. This prompted. That's sportsmanship? What has it ever, what has it ever, it, it, it has to be, bro, it, <laughs> I want to crash out, bro. It outrage online as sports fans questioned why the losing team was trying to get the same honor as the winning team. Yeah, what the Angel fuck? Reese, once again. Bro, let's, let's all, let's, you know, matter of fact, give both team rings, bro. You know what I'm saying? Let's both team walk, have rings. Let's both team walk down the state. You know what I'm saying, bro? Fuck it. Offended. If we were to lose, we would not be getting invited to the White House. And I remember she made a comment about both teams should be invited because it would be the, it was sports, sportsmanship. And I'm like, are you saying that because of what I did and what, like that stuff like that, it, it bothers me because you are a woman at the end of the day, and you're supposed to be standing behind us before anything. You felt like they, they should have came because of sportsmanship, right? They can have that spot. Like, we'll go to the bomb. Yo, who watches, who, um, anybody here watch the WNBA? I think I watched a few games this year, not gonna lie. I definitely watched more games than I've ever watched in my lifetime. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think I watched like, I can't even tell you what game I watched. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna. I can't. I can't. <laughs> but I did watch some games. Michelle, see Barack. Many of Angel's supporters believe that if LSU was the team that actually lost, then there was no way that they would also get invited to the White House. After the backlash, Jill Biden's press secretary clarified that only LSU would be invited, and Reese ultimately accepted the invite with her team later that week. It's easy for me to understate how many people were tuned in to this Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese beef. Louisiana versus Iowa marked the most watched NCAA women's Whoa, basketball championship game in history at 9.9 .9 million viewers. I've never watched women's ball before, but this was an interesting <laughs> tournament. Ultimately, the drama seemed to benefit the sport as a whole, and it definitely benefited Caitlin Clark's bank account. Die. In 2021, the NCAA announced that college athletes <laughs> would finally be able to make money off their <laughs> name, image, and likeness, whereas before it was illegal. Clark received endorsement deals from hy V, a a supermarket chain that has more than 200 locations across the Midwest and the South. Under the hy V brand, Clark has appeared in its seasonal magazine and several regional ads and commercials. On March 1st, 2022, Caitlin announced a partnership with H&R Block, a national tax preparation company. <laughs> Caitlin appeared as part of its A Fair Shot campaign, designed to help female athletes earn fair compensation in the NIL space compared to male athletes. Clark appeared in several national ads through the company's campaign. In July of 2022, Clark partnered with Topps, one of the largest trading card companies in the US. But Caitlin's most notable NIL endorsement came in October 2022, when Nike signed Clark to an NIL deal, alongside four other high school slash college athletes, including Bronny James. That same month, she entered another partnership, this time with Shootaway, the most prominent basketball shooting machine companies in the world. In March of 2023, Caitlin received Damn. another major endorsement, appearing in Buick Automotive's hashtag See Her Greatness campaign. Clark then partnered with the My investment bank, bank company Goldman Sachs, where she and North Carolina's men's basketball player Caleb Love represented the company's 10,000 Small Business Voices program, releasing a nationwide commercial supporting the modernization of the Small Business Administration. Then in October of 2023, Clark joined NBA player Chris Paul in a popular State Farm TV commercial. That's not Chris Paul. Nat joined NBA player Chris Paul. But uh, what? Business Administration. Then in October of 20. That should be Butler, my guy. Chris. Chris. He's trolling. There's no way. He's trolling. He's trolling. There's no way he's talking about race in a video and then you accidentally call a black man the wrong name, bro. I don't, I don't know if it's by accident. I'm going to say by accident because I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. 2023, Clark joined NBA player Chris Paul in a. I haven't seen the ad. The, 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 the ad. Maybe Chris Paul is in this video, but that wasn't Chris Paul popular State Farm TV commercial. Caitlin was bringing national visibility to- Why'd you do that, bro? There's no way. 
It's obvious how much work you put in, so we're just not going uh, uh, to her sport and getting filthy rich while doing it. But she wasn't the only one getting rich. Universities all across the United States saw exponential growth in the interest in women's basketball. During her senior season, Iowa sold out all of its home games for the first time in program history and set the women's basketball attendance record at 55,646 at a preseason yeah, exhibition that, game against DePaul. That college made money off her, ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I wonder how much, how much money the college made. Well, she made money too, ain't gonna lie. But how much money the college make off her, ain't gonna lie. Oh, I bet you never thought in your likes at a preseason exhibition game against DePaul. I bet you never thought in your life you'd see a football stadium converted into a basketball court for women's ball. Every team that hosted Iowa during the regular season set an attendance record, with an average attendance increase of 150%. During Clark's final season at Iowa, from there, regular season games featuring her became the most viewed women's basketball games of all time on six different TV networks and i was going to name some of the records that she broke and awards that she won throughout her college career but, it's too many. but there are so many that the sheer volume so of them many. is enough for you to understand her dominance however the most impressive by far oh, is that she is the all-time leading scorer man or women in college basketball history pete maravich from lsu had 3667 points he held that record for 54 years until caitlin beat it with her 3900 951 points. Clark's final regular season game against Ohio State was the most watched regular season women's basketball game since 1999, as well as the second most watched college basketball game of the season, including men's games. As we were approaching March Madness in 2024, opposing players were ready for Caitlin's demise. Nebraska guard Jazz Shelley did the infamous You Can't See Me taunt after upsetting Iowa. A tweet went viral saying, it's not ghetto, she's not a thug, pointing out yet again the lack of criticism. <laughs> It's not ghetto, she's not a thug. <laughs> a white player I'm dead. talking to Clark. The sports world was expecting drama similar to the previous year's explosive battle with Angel Reese. In the Elite Eight, the Hawkeyes faced the Tigers in a rematch of the 2023 National Championship game. Tension was at an all-time high, but the ladies kept this match professional, and Caitlin was not going to let her team go down the same way they did last year. Clark led the Hawkeyes to victory with 41 points, 12 assists, and 7 rebounds in a 94-87 win over LSU. Nah, Caitlyn is built different. The look on Angel Reese's face was priceless. Female Dark Kurt, Knight? Caitlyn is built. Dark Knight 6219. With the picture of Samuel L. Jackson. What the fuck? different. The look on Angel crazy Reese's cow, face was priceless. Female Curry, she's goaded. Caitlin Clark is the kind of generational talent that can change an entire sport. I really think she is going to make people take women's basketball a lot more seriously. Caitlin's nine three-pointers made her the Division I all-time leader in three-pointers. After defeating UConn in the Final Four, Iowa reached the national championship game for a second consecutive season. Unfortunately, Clark's 30 points, including a historic 18 points in the first quarter, Order wasn't enough to beat South Carolina, who won the game 87 to 75. As great as Caitlin was during yeah, her college game. career, as much as she carried her team no, to for four years straight, she was never able to secure a championship title. However, her star power is undeniable, and she will be considered one of the greatest women's basketball players in college history. The national championship delivered 18.9 million viewers, 10 million more than the previous year's game, That's making crazy. it the most viewed women's college basketball game in history. The media spent more time talking about Caitlin than any other players or the team that actually won the game. I mean, just look. That's gotta Every be a good one. It starts with her name. Caitlyn is a certified star, and she didn't even need to win to be seen as the winner. However, Caitlyn's well, praise is most certainly a double-edged sword. As she entered the WNBA, she was facing immense pressure to revitalize a failing sport. The ticket sales, viewership, and all other financial implications are seemingly riding on her performance as a pro. If she isn't as dominant, or there isn't a good storyline surrounding her, perhaps new fans will become less interested, and the WNBA will miss out 
out on their opportunity to finally become a profitable business. Additionally, other professional players are not very fond of Caitlyn. They are not convinced she will be able to handle the big leagues. Yeah, with and there's no doubt that they are playing more aggressively towards her. They are fouling her much harder, sometimes to the point of blatantly hitting her in the head. And the conversation of her being a straight white female boosting her success will continue to permeate throughout the media. With the first Barbara overall pick of up. the 2024 WNBA draft, I'm a little under the weather. Craft, the Indiana Fever selected Clark. This broadcast averaged 2.45 million viewers, which was the most in WNBA draft history. Clark's professional contract is worth $338,000 over four years. The to. fans were outraged at this news. In comparison, the NBA's first overall pick is expected to make $57.19 million over the first four years. On average, the NBA rookie contracts average about $33 million, whereas the WNBA rookie contracts average about $320,000. Luckily for Clark, her endorsement deal was about to make up for the lack of funds the WNBA was providing. Adidas offered her a four-year, $6 million contract. Under Armour offered her a four-year, $16 million contract. But she ultimately signed a $28 million contract. I like how they just, I like how they just, they be reading these numbers like they just small numbers, bro. These are big numbers, bro. The, no, I'm not. It's crazy. Can you send me a link? With Nike that spans eight years Unk is crazy. and includes a signature shoe. Caitlyn also signed a multi-year deal with I'm, Bro, Rachel, you gotta stop calling me up, bro. I'm literally only three years older than you. <laughs> I'm three years older than you, Rachel. I'm not no unk. <laughs> Sporting goods, the WNBA's official basketball supplier. Wilson said that Clark would test, advise, and provide feedback on a Talk range of nice basketball on products, yeah. become a brand ambassador, and release new collections that celebrate her throughout 2024. Not only was Clark receiving praise from fans in the media around the world, but because of endorsements, she just earned a level of wealth that no female basketball player has ever seen before. The salary cap for every single WNBA team combined is a little over $17 million. From Caitlyn's Nike endorsement alone, she could pay every single WNBA player's salary for one year and still have $10 million left over. So Wait, imagine maths. how all of the other players feel, even the ones on her team. They play on the same court, they play the same game, and they often outperform Caitlyn, but they won't receive nearly as much or any media attention at all, and they'll make about $80,000 a year, which is not even enough to comfortably afford a typical home in America. It's safe to say that Caitlyn Clark had a target on her back. Several WNBA players, including some who are no longer in the league, made public comments that many interpreted as being antagonistic towards Clark. So there's been this hot take debate about, you know, do you need to have a championship for legacy when yeah. you talk about a women's college basketball player? You are the expert on this since you have four. Yeah. Um, does Caitlin Clark need a championship to be considered one of the greats in women's college basketball history? Yeah, she does. <laughs> I think so. Because then it's gonna, you're gonna look ten years back and you're gonna you're gonna see all these you're gonna see all the the records she's broken and the the points and stuff like that. But anybody knows. You know, your goal when you play college basketball is to win a national championship. So you need one. Around the same time, college basketball legend Lynette Woodward suggested during a coaches convention that Clark hadn't broken her scoring record because they weren't playing under the same rules. Uh, I'm just going to get the help that out of uh, I don't think my record has been broken uh, because you can't duplicate what you're not duplicating. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So unless you come with a men's basketball and a two-point shot, hey. <laughs> what? But just for you, so you can understand, so you can help me. Lynette played from 1978 to 1981 when women had to play with a men's size basketball, which is a slightly larger ball than the current standard. With a smaller ball but same size goal, there will be more scoring due to a higher margin for oh, error with okay. the shot still going in. I guess they that made sense, but like, I was so confused. Also did not have a three-point line back then. 
Additionally, the NCAA was not the governing body of women's collegiate sports when Woodward played, so her 3,639 career points are not recognized by the NCAA. But even if they were, Caitlin still did score more points than that. Due to the backlash she received online, Lynette issued an apology 24 hours later with bolded text on the bottom that read, Caitlin holds the scoring record. Another former player, Cheryl Swoops, attempted to undercut Caitlin's accolades, incorrectly claiming that her scoring record wasn't valid because she had been playing for more than four years. This isn't just for Caitlin, but you asked me about Caitlin. If you're going to break a record, to me, if it's legitimate, you have to break that record in the same amount of time that that player set it. Okay. In, right? So if, if Kelsey Plum set that record in four years, mm -hmm. well, Caitlin should have broke that record in four years. But because there's a COVID year, then there's another year. You know what I mean? So she's already had an extra year to break that record. So is it truly a broken record? While this seems like a decent argument, Cheryl is just misinformed. Caitlin only played college basketball for four seasons, not five. Caitlin Park right now probably takes about 40 shots a game. Caitlin only took 20 shots per game over her NCAA career. That's double than what Cheryl claimed. How much more experience that gives you over other players coming in, right? So people say, dang, like he or she's killing them, but you have a 25 year old playing against a 20 year old mm -hmm. like you, sh you should be killing them because you've been doing it a lot longer than they have cheryl then says if you got that dog in you bro you got that dog in you bro no matter how age you get you know what i'm saying but this rookie's going to league and dominating this argument is stupid caitlin is 25 when she is 22 years old then when cheryl she got, got her, called and she got her things wrong bro are you are you spitting facts and your facts aren't even facts you're spitting Spitting lies. Out for the misinformation, this was her response. I'm gonna say this, and then I wanna like be done with this whole conversation. So for people to come at me and say that I made those comments because I'm a racist, <laughs> like, first of all, black people can't be racist, but like. <laughs> what that nigga say? He said, he said, he said, he said <laughs> um, oh, what did he say, bro? He said, Somehow, well, oh my gosh, we're the least racist, but the least racist is still racist or something like that, broski. What you mean black people can be racist? I mean, but black people, I argue black people the most racist on GAT. Yo, black people be the most racist. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. Like that's Yo, the what? the farthest thing from my mind. Like, I grew up in a very small West Texas town, predominantly white. My best I'm beginning childhood to... friend is white. I've been getting knocked down by... Oh, come on now, So bro. it's important that's, for me that stupid. I speak up for people that look like me. Like, it's Black History Month. So, like, our ancestors fought and died for us to have opportunities that we have today. Um, I have, like, no issues with Caitlyn. Her breaking the record, I think, obviously, is a tremendous accomplishment. Although... You know, we could get into that discussion also because there was a big debate on Lynette Alert. Woodard having yeah. the actual record. Phoenix Mercury guard Diana Taurasi made a disparaging comment when she was asked about the up-and-coming group of college superstars, which included Clark and Angel Reese. Reality is coming, Tarusi said. You look like superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to come play with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Naturally, Caitlin Clark fans were at her neck on social media, but she doubled down. Uh, yeah, you know, it's the new fans are really sensitive these days. You can't say anything. Uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of like when you go from kindergarten to first grade, there's a learning adjustment. When you go from high school to college, there's a learning adjustment. Unless you get that dog in you. Know, I, I, I don't think I said it. Unless you get that dog in you, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't factually correct. And like anything, greatness is going to translate. And uh, she's proven that in every level. And I don't see it being any different in the WNBA. All those sensitive fans didn't even know who Tarasi was until Caitlin Clark. Anyone who criticizes or even makes a subtle negative comment on Clark will receive pretty obnoxious replies from people on social media. 
that did not stop the women from saying how they feel. Aja Wilson, the Las Vegas Aces star, told AP News Las that she Vegas felt Clark's Aces? whiteness was a huge factor in her popularity. You can be top-notch at what you are as a black woman, she said, but they don't see it as marketable, so it doesn't matter how hard I work. She added, it boils my blood when people say it's not about race because it is. In a league in which approximately 70% of the players are black, nearly a third identify as LGBTQ, and most come from urban environments, Clark is white, straight, and from Iowa. However, others merely say it's just because she's an incredible player. Her play style and ability to shoot deep three-pointers is reminiscent of Steph Curry, who is a modern-day NBA superstar that kids all around the world love. Not to mention the endless list of records she holds. There's no solid argument against Caitlin Clark being great, but that was in college. How is her professional career going so far? Caitlin made her debut on May 14th, scoring 20 points in a 92-71 loss to the Connecticut Suns. Ten days later, she posted her first double-double with 11 points, 10 rebounds, and 8 assists, showcasing her potential in the Fever's first regular win over the Los Angeles Sparks. On May 28th, in a rematch with the Sparks, she recorded a career high, 30 points, 5 rebounds, and 6 assists in a crazy block. loss. During the game, Clark broke the record for the fastest WNBA rookie to reach 100 points and 50 assists. She was named the league's Rookie of the Month in May. Still, Clark received criticism for not reaching the unattainable standards bestowed upon her by the media. While she was performing well, she wasn't performing well enough. Her high turnover count paired with the Fever only winning one game in May, earning them a 1-8 record. Then again, a lot of Clark's on-court success has been hindered by what seems to be the relentless defense against her. Take a look at this obvious flagrant foul committed on Clark by Kennedy Carter, who seems to have called her a little bitch before pushing her from behind. <laughs> or this Seattle Storm player who blocked the ball and drove her elbow directly That's into aggressive. Caitlin's head. The refs did not call a foul. Or when Angel Reese, who now plays for the Chicago Sky, lunged her arm into Caitlin, knocking her down, then taunting her as she ran away, with again, no call from the refs. Ironically, Clark doesn't really care that other players are targeting her. It is what it is. I feel like I'm just at the point where you accept it and don't retaliate. Up, I'm trying not to let it bother me. However, others are speaking on her behalf. Fever coach Christy Sides told reporters that she believes Clark has been treated unfairly. It's tough to keep getting hammered the way she does and to not get rewarded with free throws or foul calls. The coach followed up by tagging the WNBA on Twitter where she wrote, This is unacceptable. When will the consistent complaints be heard? The Fever's general manager, Lynn Dunn, piled on, asking the lead to clean up the crap on Twitter. NBA legend LeBron James made headlines for his defense of Clark. In April, he tweeted, If you don't rock with Caitlin Clark's game, you're just a flat-out hater. During an episode of his podcast, Braun claimed that a new player in the professional league is not going to receive praise. It's normal for opponents and even teammates to show animosity towards rookies. The people could have been your teammates, could have been the people you were competing yeah. against. They weren't celebrating you. No, not at all. They wanted to kick your ass. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, my teammates, for sure. There's video evidence of my teammates basically saying he's not ready or there's somebody playing his position or we're not putting all our faith in the 18-year-old kid. So the my own teammates that I had to, like, be on the floor with, practicing with, on the planes with, you know, in the locker room, in-game situations was kind of... You know, just had this kind of, you know, like you say, you don't say hate, but just like animosity, like towards, uh, towards me, and and I didn't even come in with that. I didn't come in. I came in with the narrative, but I didn't come in with that type of aura. I just wanted to come in and learn from the vets, and then put, you know, put the work in. So I think for for my advice to Caitlin, um, and my advice to anyone that comes in with this, you know, this level of like notoriety. Hey. You know, out of this world <clears throat> expectation. You know, it's all about having you know a, a, be a, a horse, man. You know, the Kentucky Derby. Put your blinders on. Go to work. Show up to work. Punch your clock in. Prepare yourself. Work on your game. Work on your craft. You know, kind of keep your mouth shut. You know, and just learn from the vets when they ask you. Voice your opinion if, if they want your opinion, man. Early on because everybody is looking for you to say anything and they're gonna splice it and cut it and make it a negative thing. Like ESPN host Pat McAfee also chimed in to defend Caitlin Clark. But I would like the media people that continue to say, this rookie class, this rookie class, this rookie class, nah, just call it for what it is. There's one white bitch for yeah. the Indiana team yeah. who is a superstar. And is it because 
She stayed in Iowa, put an entire state on her back, took a program from nothing to a multiple year success story. Is it because she would go on to break the entire points records in the history of the NCAA? Not just the women's record by Kelsey Plum, shout out, mm -hmm. but also Pistol Pete Maravich's, the dude's record as well. Is there a chance that people just enjoy watching her play basketball because how electrifying she is, what she did, what she stood for, how she went about going what she went for? Maybe. But instead, we have to hear people say that we only like her because she's white. And she's the only popular because the rest of the rookie class is doing what they're doing. Well, that's a bunch of bullshit. And we think the WNBA, more specifically, their refs need to stop trying to screw her over at every single turn. What you have is somebody special. While McAfee was criticized for calling Caitlyn a bit, many <laughs> agreed with his sentiments. However, Angel <laughs> Reese pushed back on the narrative that Clark is single-handedly bringing new fans to the sport. It all started from the national championship game, and I've been dealing with this for two years now. And understanding, like, yeah, negative things have probably been said about me, but honestly, I'll take that because look where women's basketball is. People are talking about women's basketball, but you never would think that we talk about women's basketball. People are pulling up to games. We got celebrities coming to games, sold out arenas, like just because of one single game. And just looking at that, like I'll take that role. I'll take the bad guy role and I'll continue to take that on and be that for, the, for my teammates. And if I want to be that, and I know I'll go down in history, I'll look back in 20 years and be like, yeah, the reason why we watch watching women's basketball is not just because of one person, it's because of me too, and I want y'all to realize that. Although many people don't want to give Angel her credit, there's no doubt that the hero vs. villain story is working in the WNBA's favor, as well as Caitlin Clark's favor. Like, yes, people want to support Caitlin because she is electrifying and genuinely talented. However, the added animosity, beef, and physicality from Angel is definitely boosting interest as well. It essentially gives Caitlin Clark something to overcome. People will claim they want good clean basketball and maybe a little bit of aggressiveness is fine but not too much there's a line to be crossed but they're kind of lying to themselves a little bit let's be honest everybody loves a little controversy we love a good hero versus villain story oh, and angel reese has just accepted the role as the villain somebody's got to do it but the league's sudden surge in popularity should be credited to clark based on tv ratings and attendance records during caitlin's first month in the wnba the los angeles sparks new york liberty and seattle storm each set attendance records while hosting the indiana fever in response to popular interest in clark the sparks vegas aces atlanta dream and washington mystics all had to move their home games against the fever to larger arenas. In the first half of the WNBA season, 16 games averaged over 1 million viewers. It's the most games to surpass 1 million viewers in WNBA history. Of those 16 games, Clark and the Indiana Fever played 14 of them. Clark also leads the WNBA in player-specific merchandise sold. The media, the other players, podcasters, YouTubers, and the WNBA as a whole makes more money every time they talk about Caitlin Clark. And at the end of the day, Yo, it's all about money. About people can make money talking about the WNBA <laughs> Yo, and off. they're going to keep talking about it. And who is the most famous, most popular, most interesting person in the WNBA? Caitlin Clark. The WNBA's 36 million unique TV viewers in 2023 marked a 27% increase from the previous season while revenue was up about $200 million. And that was before Clark was even in the league. One month after Clark joined the league, Commissioner Kathy Engelbert announced that teams would be traveling on private charter flights this season. Y'all should be thanking that girl for getting y'all ass private charters, all the money and visibility she bring into the WNBA. Don't be petty like dudes. Listen. Don't be petty like dudes. Concert, give her her flowers. Stop being petty, all you women out there. She got y'all ass charters. She bringing all y'all this money to the table. But y'all being petty like dudes. And even though there are a handful of outspoken individuals who seem to be anti Caitlin Clark, the silent majority of WNBA players likely are very grateful for Clark and Reese for bringing more interest and more money to the sport. But as we all know, Controversy sells. The masses did not care about Clark's greatness before she had some drama surrounding her name. <laughs> Wait, bro. bro. This guy, I mean, everybody cheered, bro, but this guy looking a little too excited, bro. Yo, you good? <laughs> <laughs> which notably started with her beef with Angel Reese. The WNBA, the media, social media personalities, YouTubers will all continue to milk and farm drama and controversy as much as possible to generate money and interest from casual viewers. Bye they are she. hoping that little by little those people will become interested in and become regular viewers of the WNBA. I mean, here you are, 20, 30 minutes deep into a video about the- Hey, shush. 
WNBA. Hey, Did you sh- think you'd ever watch one? But at the same time, Caitlin Clark is a generation. Why you had to give me like that? What the hell? <laughs> talent. Caitlin is going to inspire a whole now? generation of girls that believe they can be a superstar like her one day. And because of her, the trickle down effect will occur. The WNBA will generate more revenue, which will lead to higher pay, higher quality coaches, higher quality facilities, equipment, technology, and overall infrastructure to make sure these players satisfy the new demand. Colleges will do the same. With more WNBA interest, women's basketball events will see a boost in ticket sales and merchandise sales. Therefore, the universities are going to scout even harder, hoping to get a talent remotely as exciting as Caitlin Clark, which means that high schools and youth basketball programs all around the country will invest in their infrastructure to build up female basketball players. Since now they have an uptick in colleges scouting and looking to give even more scholarship opportunities to young girls, which means that parents will be inspired and incentivized to get their daughters into basketball earlier, to refine their skills and potentially turn it into a career, which will increase the overall quality and competitiveness of female basketball players from toddlers to the WNBA. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it fucked up. Caitlin Clark is the reason why a lot of great things is going to happen for the WNBA.